G'day guys and gal. When people ask who is the most powerful character in the entirety of Warhammer 40k, idiots will say the Primarchs, the ignorant will say the Emperor, and the intellects will say Sly Marbo. But none of these answers are correct, for the real Gigachad Doomslayer of 40k is none other than Malum Kato, an Ultramarine who single-handedly stopped an entire Chaos invasion by running around at Mach 4, absolutely shredding through Chaos Space Marines, Terminators, Champions, Sorcerers, Demons, and all sorts of Nazi stuff, all the while just spamming taunts at them. I purge again. The dude does things that even a Primarch would struggle with, made more impressive by the fact that what he accomplished is by all means physically impossible. But he did it anyway, and that is worth talking about. Before we get started, 2024 is the year to get jacked, and the saying abs are made in the kitchen has never been more relevant. So I have partnered with Factor today to save you some time, money, and to get you looking your best. Factor is a service that sends you a week's supply of incredible microwave meals. As they are pre-cooked, all you need to do is chuck them in the microwave and within a couple of minutes, you have a delicious, high protein, healthy meal. The advantage Factor has is that firstly, the meals are never frozen, so they maintain their freshness and different meals are sent out every week, so you never get bored of them. I mean, it literally sounds too good to be true. It saves time because the cooking and cleanup is very fast. It saves your summer bod as each meal is filling and has great macronutrients. It saves your taste buds as the meals are awesome. And by using my link or QR code, you get 50% off your first box and two free wellness shots with each box as well. Can't say no to shots. You can even pick your own meals. Honestly, one of the best brands I've worked with, and if somehow you don't like it, then you can cancel after the first week. Cheers to Factor for sponsoring this video. Today, we'll go over the lore of Malum Kato, which will also take us through the events and lore of Bolt Gun. We'll then discuss why he is so overpowered, and if he is actually canon or not. Also, in the spirit of becoming more reliable with my lore and sources, I'll be putting the sources of the lore I speak about in the description below, underneath where I put my thumbnail art source bit. So if you wanna do further reading or fact check me or whatever, then that should help. By putting it there, it also means I don't have to kill the pacing of my videos by sourcing shit every two minutes. Uh, let's get into it. <laughs> Although we don't get to see much, if any, of Kato's backstory, the fact that he was a Stern Guard veteran speaks volume to his previous experience. The Stern Guard veterans are the creme de la creme of a Space Marine chapter. They have survived countless battles and are marksmen experts who are also celebrated for their tactical prowess and versatility. Whenever a mission needs doing or a line needs holding, a squad of Stern Guard veterans will be deployed to become the backbone of the Space Marine force. So we can safely assume that Kato has clapped his share of heretic cheeks and knows how to fuck shit up. Does that justify him literally soloing an entire army? Army of Chaos Elite? Mm, we'll see. I mean, his name literally translates to I Kill Evil, so there's that. A few years after the Orc and then Chaos Invasion of the Forge World of Greya, which was the events of the Space Marine 1 video game, something that Kato likes to reference as he is a bit of an ultra boner for Titus, I will finish the work Captain Titus started. Shit has gotten hairy again, with some spicy tech priests messing around with a special Chaos artifact which inadvertently opened up a warp portal, allowing Chaos to once again come knocking, because of course the tech priests did that. The Forge world is once again getting turbo penetrated by Chaos, so the Inquisition sends one Stern Guard veteran squad, Kato's squad, to go sort it out. But like, man, the Inquisition must have known something, because a single Stern Guard squad, no matter how good they are, would not be able to kill thousands of demons, cultists, and Chaos Space Marines in a single mission. To make matters worse, Kato's entire squad was killed when their drop pod landed awkwardly, leaving Kato as the only survivor. But if you thought that would dampen Kato's resolve, then boy you got another thing coming. He instantly starts sprinting at the cow's horde, bunny hopping around and capping bitches with his bolt gun. As he tears through the cow's tide, he's able to find and equip various new weapons, some pretty standard ones like the shotgun, plasma gun and so on, but then he also discovers the grav cannon, Volkite cavalier and even the vengeance launcher. Not to mention he also picks up various different ammunitions for his bolt gun along the way, using them to devastating effect. Fun fact, the Stern Guard veterans are famous for their use of switching bolt ammo type mid-battle, adding to their already impressive versatility. As Kato is a man of culture, he only uses one melee weapon, and no, it's not his massive balls, but the humble chainsword, which he uses to humble the shit out of Kaos' tits. As Kato is ripping and tearing until it is done, he learns that a Kaos sorcerer called Tumulia Samael is trying to find the Kaos artifact and supercharge it in order to turn Greya into his own personal demon world before then corrupting the entire sector 
big no-no in Kato's book, so the warrior king of Ultramar sets out to stop him. However, in his path are challenges that are impossible. Kato must slay a great unclean one, a greater demon of Nurgle, and something that very, very, very few space marines have ever managed to slay by themselves, but he fucking does it anyway. Then even more challenging, he has to fight a Lord of Change, a greater demon of Titsnitch who are powerful enough to turn you inside out with a thought. But Kato doesn't really give a fuck about that, so he murders the spicy bird demon as well. Now at this point, if I was Chaos Sorcerer Tamulia Samael, and I had been getting non-stop reports about how a single psychotic Ultramarine killed thousands of my warriors, as well as both greater demons sent to stop him and was now beeline lining right for me, I'd probably just call it a day and fuck off to bother someone else. I mean, it's pretty clear that something insane is happening. Maybe the Emperor himself is puppeting Kato for all Samael knows. But no, Samael tries to proceed with his plan anyway, and to his credit, he does manage to find the Chaos Artifact before Kato, and then he proceeds to begin opening the Warp Rift more and more. However, before he can grow it until it engulfs the planet and makes shit really bad, Kato catches up with him and they have a hell of a showdown. Samael doesn't play fair and he actually summons another Lord of Change and a Great Unclean One, which Kato proceeds to kill, meaning in this one non-stop engagement, he has killed four greater demons alongside hundreds of Chaos Space Marines of all ranks and power, including a number of chosen champions which are literally picked by the gods. With all of his tricks and power cut through, Samael is then massacred by Kato, before Kato then pumps a few extra rounds into his corpse to be sure. Kato then hands over the Chaos Artifact to the Inquisition for them to safeguard, closing the warp portal in the process. However, the world is still overrun with demons and heretics. Kato's work is not done, so he picks up his bolt gun and charges forth, prepared to cleanse the entire world if need be. So there you have his lore, but why the fuck is he so overpowered? I mean, to be fair, there are a number of space marines who are pretty ridiculous in their power. Kaldo Drago is one, Mephiston is another, but the thing these guys have in common is that they are both overpowered psychers, and they're both suffused with power that no other space marine possesses, making them closer to actual demigods than just super soldiers. Kato is not a psyker as far as anyone can tell, nor has he been obviously stuffed with god tier power. The Emperor also didn't seem to have a direct hand in it. After all, many, many, many worlds suffer chaos incursions and fall. Why would the Emperor break his already broken back to help Kato save this one? Well, we can actually look at the Fire Warrior game and book for answers. Fire Warrior is a game about a Tau Fire Warrior who goes on to lick some absolute tits, committing just as much damage as Kato did, but being even more impressive due to being a simple Tau Infantryman. Now you could just say that these are video games designed to be fun so they make their protagonist overpowered as hell, and that is fine unless it is considered canon, which at that point it needs some actual lore behind it. For Fire Warrior, although it's not clear if this is actually canon or not, it was revealed that the Fire Warrior had actually caught the attention of Korn, who thought the little blue man was so funny and entertaining that he actually suddenly infused him with power and guided him to cause more bloodshed. After all, Korn doesn't care from whence the blood flows. So there's a chance that Korn also thought Kato was fucking awesome and decided to give him a pat on the back. After all, the Chaos Forces Kato was fighting were either Cultists, Black Legion, or Demons of Nurgle and Titsnitch. They didn't seem to be Kornite demons, so Korn would have actually loved seeing his Chaos brothers get humiliated by one white helmeted spaz. However, this is just theory crafting. There remains the very, very real chance that Kato was just too angry to die, so the logical result was all his enemies dying instead. But is Bolt Gun, and by extension Malum Kato, canon? Does this mad lad actually exist in the same universe as the one we've grown to know and love over the last few decades? The answer isn't 100% clear, but it's actually looking like yes, it is. Bolt Gun is considered to be a part of the Space Marine 1 video game universe, a game that wasn't actually canon due to Titus being captain of the second company, a role that is actually held by Kato Sicarius. The developers even stated that Space Marine 1 took place in a parallel universe. However, they realized that was lame as fuck, so for Space Marine 2, they deranked Titus to a lieutenant so he doesn't overwrite any other canon characters. And then they also released a tabletop model of Titus, which is about as solidified in canon as you can get. The devs also expressed that they wanted Space Marine 2 to be a part of the current 40k canon, and that now there was no reason why it couldn't be. So with that in mind, there's also no reason why Bolt Gun wouldn't be either. After all, the voice actor for Kato actually kitbashed his own model, which was featured by Warhammer Community, so that's close enough. Every universe needs its Doom Slayer, and 40k finally has theirs. I would literally shit out my milk if we ever get a scene with Gilliman and Kato, G-Man being like, my son, I've read the reports and what the fuck? And Kato was standing there like fucking frothing out of the mouth being like, unleash me upon the enemies of the Emperor. I shall smite them with my righteous fury. Like they have to keep him on a fucking ultra leash and shit, which he then breaks out of anyway and proceeds to beat Abaddon to death with his massive balls or something. See, this is why I should be a law writer. Games Workshop, you owe me royalties when you use that law for Abaddon's demise. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then subscribe or I'll let Kato out of his cage and tell him that you're a fucking heretic. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.